Hey there everyone, Dr. Beth Westy here and I wanted to pop on, talk about carbs and talk about pasta specifically because a lot of times women when they're trying to increase their metabolism, burn more fat, all of these things, they're thinking, oh my gosh, I can't eat carbs and oh, I can't eat pasta. For some people, like, love pasta, right? Like, love it, staple in their daily, weekly nutrition. Other people, they're like, meh. I don't know, take it or leave it, whatever. So every now and then is fine, right? So I wanted to break down these different types of um, pasta and just talk about the nutrients in them. So when you're making a choice for pasta, you really can make a better choice for you. Um, when I talk about you know nutrients and foods, carbs and protein specifically, I do cover more of this in my book, The Female Fat Solution, which is on Amazon. Um, I also talk more about this in different podcast episodes, The Female Health Solution, so you can check out my podcast, which is on all places you can find podcasts. And then this is something that I specify for women that work with me in my programs. I have a 12-week program where we go through protein pacing, carb cycling, intermittent fasting, right? And then nutrition for hormones. Now, <laughs> Allison says, it looks like you raided my pantry. Maybe I did. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's not creepy. <laughs> That's not weird. Uh, but a lot of women that I work with, they're, they've been avoiding foods that they love or unsure on what ones to eat and when and all of these things. And one of the things when we talk about carbs specifically, I'm going to write this down because this is sort of the you know meat and potatoes of what I do when I talk about nutrition for women. When we, we're looking at working with estrogen here right? Estrogen burns carbs. This is going to be days one through 14 of your cycle. If you don't have a cycle, if you have, you know, some type of birth control, IUD, something, perimenopause, menopause, things like that. Absolutely. You can still take advantage of the carb burning phase of estrogen, right? And I've done other videos on that, or I can talk about that. If you have questions on that, if you're like, oh my gosh, what about me? I want to do that. Where do I fit that in? I'll put a link below this video. You can schedule a call with me and we'll talk about what are the best next steps for you to take, right? If you love carbs and you're like, how do I get my metabolism revved with that? That is what we can talk about. So I'll put that link below to schedule a call. So you'll know what to do then. All right. But when we look at pasta, Overall, these are just some different types of pasta that I literally have in my pantry. Um, <clears throat> I do some of the shopping, the grocery shopping. My husband does some of the grocery shopping. I love Costco. Shocker. For <laughs> those of you that don't know me, you're like, what? She loves Costco. For those of you that know me, you're like, oh my God, here she goes. Here she goes. Yes, I love Costco. Costco's amazing and it's fantastic. So, but when we look at this, um, so this I got at Costco, this I got at Costco. So this is, these are just, some, yeah, and this is like really what I, I use. So this is um, millet and brown rice. See, it's organic millet and brown rice ramen. It says gluten-free and vegan. I'm not vegan, but a lot of stuff that's like gluten-free or dairy-free or blah, blah, they'll be like vegan too, cool. <laughs> um, but I got this, this is rice ramen at um, Costco. I'll show you what it looks like, right? It literally looks like ramen. Oh, a little chunk fell out, that's okay right? Like a little ramen block here, but it's made right with millet and brown rice. So when we're looking at this and of course it'll say the serving size here. So I, I want to teach people more about how to read labels and how to really do some of this stuff. For, so for those of you that are like, Oh my gosh, <clears throat> I, I want to do more. I want to be healthier. Or if you're like, Oh, I'm nervous about a program or something. That's totally fine. I walk people through step by step on these things. So I'm going to get, start giving you guys little snippets of what you will learn in the program, because my mission is just to educate women on their health, on their bodies, on nutrition, and how to blend the two together to get the best health that you can get. So when we look at this though, a serving size is half a piece on here, like a half of one of those blocks. <sighs> Let's be real. Okay. Let's be real for a second. For me, I would eat one of those whole blocks. I would, that's just how it would go. Um, but when we're looking at the nutrient value, specifically the carb and protein per serving, I will do all of this per serving, right? I will do all of it per serving, but there's 24 grams of carb and four grams of protein per serving here. So <clears throat> carb is 24 grams and protein, what was it, four? make sure I get that right. Yep. Four grams per serving. Now, of course, if you're eating a pasta dish, if you are um, a carnivore and you add some type of protein, ground turkey, right? When I talk about uh, estrogen, uh, 
turkey is a cooling food. So if you're not familiar with that, um, I talk about that everywhere else, but let me know if you have questions on that. But, uh, so adding ground turkey, that's a cooling food. If you're in a warming phase and you still need to get carb in, you know, beef, venison, bison, whatever, right? Ground turkey. Sure. You know, um, so lots of options there, but there's, this is 24 grams of carb and four grams of protein. So pretty decent per serving in terms of a, a moderate amount of uh, carbohydrate. And then if you have some type of meat sauce with it, right? Boom. There you go. You got more protein. Now with this, this is a, this we got at like the regular grocery store. It, you can't see it as much cause it's kind of shiny. Um, uh, but it says made from chickpeas. So this is a chickpea. This is a chickpea, um, pasta rotinis. Now this is a tiny box. So like I would eat the whole box. I'm just saying, right? I'm in preseason for football, bulking up, boom. <laughs> but again, we're going to go per serving, right? A serving is two ounces. So they say there's four servings per box. I was like, really? Maybe if I used it as an appetizer, <laughs> right? You feel me on that, right? Okay. So this is going to have this chickpea protein. Um, this chickpea stuff is going to have for carb, we are looking at 32 grams of carb, which you might be surprised at because, but it is, um, a lot of that is fiber. There's a lot of fiber. Eight grams of that is fiber. So if you subtract the fiber from this, you're actually at true, true carbohydrate is the same as this. So keep that in mind. When you're looking at carb on the label, you can see that there's eight grams of fiber here. I don't know if that's showing up, but that's eight grams of fiber, but 32 gram of carb right there. And then for protein though, this is already for 14 grams of protein per serving. So just alone, yes, it's got almost twice as much carb as protein, but the ratio is much better. And this, the, this higher carb is actually a lot. There's eight grams of fiber. Yeah. Sorry. That's pretty dang close. It's pretty amazing. All right, now let's go into this. This is um, just a quinoa pasta, right? Quinoa is very common, right? So I wanted to give you some different examples here of different types of pasta because I, there's so many different things out there. Especially, and I'm gluten-free, so I talk about gluten-free stuff. So I'm not even going with regular wheat pasta. And this is just what it is. Um, I mean, it's regular spaghetti. A lot of this stuff, it cooks the same. If I have people over for dinner and, sorry, I have a hair. What is happening? There it is. Do you guys see this? Probably not. It's, it went crazy and in my eyeball a little bit. Okay, cool. We're good. Um, <laughs> when if I don't tell people it's gluten-free, they will have no idea. They'll have no idea that it's gluten-free. So when we're looking at quinoa pasta though, and looking at this again, looking at per serving, that's how I'm breaking it down. This has 45 grams of carb here. How tall is this? I want to make sure we can still see this. Carb is going to be 45 grams per serving. So that's really not that much. And then protein is still only five grams. So I, I'm not sure if you guys like have heard this, but I have heard this left, right, and all over the place where they're like, oh, quinoa is such a great carb because it's higher in protein, blah, blah, blah. Okay. But when you're comparing it with millet and brown rice, Per serving, it's not really that much, but look how much more carb is here. So these are things to sort of watch and pay attention to. It's not just a matter of, oh, this is bad, this is good. How does it fit into your plan for the day? If you haven't had carbs all day, or if you are having a high carb day, if you're having a high carb day and you're trying to get carbs in, this is the right choice for you then, you know? Otherwise, it's kind of tough sometimes to get a ton of carb in. If you are doing a lower carb day, right? I don't recommend keto for women, especially. This is not a place where I'm going to get into that because it, I could talk for hours on how, how horrific it is for the female body, for your stress levels, for your endocrine system and everything. I have other podcasts on that. I have other things like that. Anyway, but if you can play around with your carb amounts day to day, just up and down a little bit, again, keeping them within a certain healthy range, but... If you've got a big workout or you did a big workout or something like that, you need to replenish the glycogen in your muscle tissue. You need to. Boom. This is a great way to do it, right? Um, and just, you know, keep a healthy amount of carb in your system. So 
but this is, you know, this has some protein, but this is the quinoa, right? But this is the millet and brown rice, same proteins, but there's that. All right, now this, I don't, I don't know why we have this actually. I, I, I kind of found it in the pantry and I was like, what? How did we get this? I think maybe I wanted to make a dish. Sometimes I do this where I'll be like, I'm gonna make a super fun dish and I'll go out and get things or I'll go to a specific grocery store, you know, like a specialty grocery store and then I'll get some things and then I'll be like, oh, I, I don't know how to make that. <laughs> or I'll use, or somebody will use some of the ingredients for something else before I get a chance to make what I was gonna make. So I think I was gonna make some soup or something with this. Some like fancy dish and I just never, it never happened. So anyway, so I still have this. Um, but this was a great example too. Again, per serving for two ounces um, and servings per, per container then is like two point or 3.5. So two ounces of this, servings per container is 3.5, which I'm always like, why? Why would you do that? Who's gonna eat? Who's the 0.5 person that you've got left over? Pfft, come on, <laughs> so annoying. But when you look at this, protein right this is just rice rice sticks like just rice noodles um and i'm not sure with the way that they're processed or whatever um it's just rice cornstarch and water those are the only ingredients here rice cornstarch and water carb amount here is 48 grams per serving per serving protein amount zero yeah so when you're looking at carbs, when you're looking at pastas and making a right choice for you, um, you know, you can go with like regular pastas, of course, but again, I'm not covering that. These are gluten-free ones. These are specialty ones, but these are your higher carb options here. These are super high carb, lower protein, right? Per serving, that's a ton of carbs. So if you're going to eat that, again, that's fine. Just make sure that you are rounding things out. I did a video where I talked about macros. Um, for estrogen and, and macros for progesterone. So you would need to bump up your proteins and healthy fats a crap ton with this. Like you would have to have a big steak on the side or like three quarters a cup or a cup of ground beef. That's a lot of ground beef. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. But really add up, boost up the protein here to match these numbers in terms of carb. For here, this is going to be the best ratio overall, and this is the chickpea, right? Again, texture is going to be a little different here, but the chickpea is going to be great here, um, especially because a lot of this is fiber. Remember, eight grams of fiber. This overall, it's still way lower carb, and then just a little bit of protein, again, but easy to boost. Eat way easy. You get a half a chicken breast. Boom. There you are. You're right there. You're right at that evenly matched number in terms of protein per carb. Um, and then add some healthy fat, have half an avocado or something with it. Woo, there you go. So just some examples of how to put this together. Um, again, estrogen burns carbs, but if you are in, you know, planning out your week or you want a meal plan and you wanna try carb cycling and you, you can still have pasta and carb cycle, even on a lower carb day. If you're really doing a serving, a lower carb day can be 50, 60, 70 grams of protein, depending on where your numbers are, right? And again, if you have questions, we can talk about that. But that would mean that this would be, you know, a third of the carb that you would need that day. So you, which is great, right? Like that's, that makes it really easy and manageable. Oh, I'm doing a lower carb day. I'm going to have, you know, a piece of toast with my eggs and greens for breakfast. For lunch, I make, I'm going to make sure I have, you know, a banana in my smoothie. And then for dinner, here we go. I'm going to have um, one serving of this, which is a small amount, right? But one serving of this, blah, blah, blah. You're going to have tons of energy. You're going to be able to, you know, work out still. You're going to have re great recovery, right? And you're going to be starting that carb cycle on the lower day, bump up to a high day. You're like, whoo, I got to have a bagel in the morning, you know, <laughs> right? I got to have a bunch more, you know, carbs throughout the day. And then for dinner, have something like this. Boom. Again, still pair it with the protein. Just because you're having a higher carb day doesn't mean you decrease your proteins a ton. You usually take from the healthy fats a little bit to, to balance things out. Really, really important though to, to understand that. So, but this is, again, just an example. I was having this conversation with somebody the other day and we were talking about this and I thought, you know what, this is great. I'm gonna start to really teach this more. Look at labels, look at how to read them. You know, the fiber in here can take down the total carb amount here, but overall, if I'm really looking to lean out, 
these options are gonna be great for low carb and then for higher carb days. Okay, so that's what I got for you guys today. Thanks for tuning in. If you guys have questions, let me know. I'll put that link below this video. You can schedule a call. If you know somebody that could use this information too, please share this video. Share this video with them, you know, privately um, or share it, you know, on, on Facebook, whatever it is, or send them the YouTube link, whatever, however you can share it because so many people don't understand that you can still eat, you know, carbs. You can still eat pasta especially if you love pasta. Little things like this make a big difference in terms of you staying on track. It's not about taking things out. It's not about like stopping eating what you love all the time. Just tweak it a little bit, change it, and fit it in with your goals. So that's what I got for you. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you later.